Hello, America. Kevin McCormick here with the McCormick View. Thanks for tuning in with us. Keep those calls and emails coming. We love to hear from you. You can catch us on Facebook, Twitter, and email. We'll have those addresses up there for you as the show goes on. I wanted to come to you today to offer you the McCormick View on the situation with young Trayvon Martin down in Florida. And I just want to say first off to his family, um, my heart's thoughts, prayers, condolences go out to you and the, the grief that you have to endure over this situation. Uh, I'm inspired by your activism in terms of bringing attention to the situation and how common uh, racial profiling is, especially among young black teens than most people realize. So keep up the good work. I'm wearing a hoodie today in support of Trayvon because Trayvon liked to wear hoodies and I'm wearing a hoodie in support of Trayvon and in support of his family. America, this racial profiling, especially of young black males, has got to stop. It goes on far too often. It goes on by law enforcement, and it goes on by what you might call pseudo-law enforcement, which is the situation with Trayvon Martin's case. This person was not a true law enforcement officer. He was a neighborhood watch, self-appointed neighborhood watch. He was instructed by the 911 dispatcher to not pursue Trayvon, even though he suspected that Trayvon was something that he turned out not to be i.e. a criminal, yet he pursued Trayvon, and it, and it looks like that he engaged Trayvon when he should have just left him alone, and it's tragic. It's extremely tragic. This is a 17-year-old young man who had a bright future ahead of him that has been taken away. His family is going to go through immeasurable amounts of grief from now until the end of their days. This is a young man who, who had a bright future, but now he'll never get the love again, He'll never get to be cool again, and he is just gone forever. And it's a tragic, tragic event. And Florida should really consider rewriting or at least revising their uh, self-defense law, or whatever it is that they call it, because to allow somebody to not be prosecuted for something that is this obvious to the rest of America on a common sense level because he can claim self-defense um, is just disgusting this is the only word that i can think of it's disgusting and it should never have happened and he should never be allowed to escape prosecution for this now if he should be arrested and the evidence should be presented as it as we know it and it should be put in front of a jury a jury of his peers and that jury should decide whether this man is guilty or not for the crime that he allegedly committed and it doesn't look like that that's going to happen we hope that, it, that, that justice will be served and that it will, but we're not sure if it's going to be in this case. I have a young son, America. My son is 10 years old, and this is a picture of my son. His name is Kevin Jr. He loves football, he loves NASCAR, and he loves being a good friend to his buddies. He's a good student, and he has a caring spirit. And he's not a troublemaker. He likes to wear a hoodie on most days. But if you see him out walking about America, as he gets to be older into his teenage years, don't assume that he's a criminal. And if he's, if he's harassing somebody, send him home because there's a lot of people that care about him and there's a lot of people that will straighten him out. But he's not a criminal, America, and neither was Trayvon Martin. And it's unfortunate that Trayvon Martin got identified as a criminal based strictly on the way that he's dressed and not by the content of his character. And as such, Trayvon Martin is no longer with us. And that's a shame. And I hope that this tragedy never happens to another family ever again. And I hope that by the, the groundswell uprising of sentiment that's been sprouting up on social media and in the mainstream media, that this situation can be corrected so that it never again happens to another family. It'll never be corrected for the Martin family, and that's unfortunate. But hopefully through their activism and through the activism of all of us on social media that we'll be able to correct this so that it never happens to another family, not to another black family, not to another Latino family, not to another Asian family, not to another white family. We don't want people to be profiled in any way that's not their true character. And unfortunately, we have so many images in society today that perpetrate the negative image stereotype of young black males. Hollywood does it, television does it, mainstream news does it, music does it. 
And granted, sometimes black America, we do it to ourselves. And so as parents, as black, black parents, we have to stand up and take a stand, draw a line in the sand and teach our young boys that to be strong, you don't have to walk around with your pants hanging down, sagging. You don't have to look like a criminal element to be strong. It's okay to be a good student. It's okay to be respectable. And we need to teach them to stand up for what is good. Trayvon was standing up for what is good. He just got mischaracterized. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the McCormick View. I thank you for tuning in. Our contact information will be flashing on the screen shortly. We'd love to hear from you. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. You can reach us by email. We'd love to hear your comments about this and all of the McCormick View episodes that air. I thank you for your attention. I continue to pray for the Martin family. God bless you, Trayvon Martin. And that is the McCormick View, folks. Thanks again. Have a great day.